Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking to get a deeper understanding of Git and hopefully feeling a bit more comfortable using some of the more scary commands or even, even the day-to-day -day commands. So by having a bit more of an understanding of what's going on under the hood in Git, uh, we'll be a little less reliant on the magic that's happening. Uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is, is step through um, performing a Git add and a Git commit, but rather than using the actual Git add and commit, we'll use the, the low-level commands that those, those commands actually call internally so we can see each step and what happens at each step because there's a few steps certainly for git add um, that occur internally um, to to be aware of what's going on here we've got we've got three there's three areas three abstract areas in git that we kind of need to understand we've got the working area whereby when you create a file it would essentially go straight it'd be in the working area or if you change a file um, and then from there you would call git add and that then moves it um, into the staging area. At that point, we'd actually get some some Git objects created. We'd get uh, we'd get the blob here, and we'd get the tree created at that point. Uh, and then finally, we would do a Git commit, and that would create us one more object. Uh, that would create us the commit object down here. Um, so there's a lot going on there. We're going to we're going to um, try and step through all of that now, uh, and hopefully it'll become a bit more clear quite what's going on. Um, so let me close that down. Uh, one thing to say though, yeah, the, those. So you've got the three areas: you've got the working area, the staging area, and the repository, and then also the three different um, file types: the blob, the tree, and the commit. Um, if I bring up another one here, just to show. Um, so I, the commit, the tree, and the blob, they all link up to each other. A commit points to a tree. Um, a tree that basically represents each folder in your repository. Uh, a tree can point to one or more blobs and also to trees as well. Again, we'll, we'll see these in action as we, we step through the, uh, the individual commands. So I'll close that down for now. Um, we'll bring up a command prompt here. And... As we're going to use the low-level commands, and we want to keep it quite clean, I'm going to, um, rather than doing a git init, we'll actually just create the git folder ourselves. Um, just having a git folder doesn't actually allow git to, to, uh, to operate. So we need to go in and create a few basic um, folders. We need, a, uh, we need a refs folder, um, and we need a heads folder. So I need to create the heads folder. And what we also need is our head pointer. Now our head pointer, we we're gonna say, in this case, we'll point it to the master branch. And we can do that just by saying uh, refs heads master. And we just put that text literally into the file head and that should keep that happy. Um, and then one of the most important ones, which will contain our objects, our commits, trees, and blobs, um, is a objects folder. So we've created an objects folder, a refs heads folder, and an actual head file. Uh, and that should keep git happy. So if I do a git status now, yes, it thinks we're it thinks we've done basically git in it. It's got enough in there that it can um, it can track our repository correctly. All right. Um, so normally you might create a file here and do git add, and that's essentially what we want to do. But we want to see what happens um, internally as we do that. So the first thing that would happen um, is that we would get a blob created, um, and to create a blob, when git internally would call um, uh, hash object. So if we if we echo the text, so they said this is a, kind of the file we're creating. We're essentially creating a file with the text hello in, but we pipe it to git hash object, and we say std in. So it just grabs that echo, and we say write it to the repository. This should do the initial first step that git add would do, which is create a blob for us. Um, it gives us the hash back, which is nice. I'll copy that. Um, and we can go and have a look at that now. So if we go into the git folder and we go into the objects folder. Um, actually, what I'll do rather than that is I'll just do tree and we can see we've still got our head file. 
we've still got our refs heads and our objects folder but it's actually a new directory called 90 um, and a new file in here which is our blob representation of the of the file with the with the hello in and we can we can prove that we can um, interrogate this file we can do a git cat file and we can identify it by using its hash so I can paste that whole thing in um, you only need the first characters really it just need to be able to uniquely identify it but I've got it copied so and if I do so if I do a git cat file dash t we can see yeah this file is a blob um, and that's that that low level file we had we had uh, commit tree blob so this is the, the lowest level of those three objects um, and we can actually pretty print it and see to confirm yep this is a blob that contains the text hello you can see the um, dash p for pretty print on that one there um, okay so that's the first step of of what what our git would do if we step back up here and do a git status um, it's not it's not aware of that file still we certainly haven't created it ourselves in the file system and we've only got a blob we need to have at least um, the tree object and it needs to be in the index as well it needs to get into the staging area for git to be aware of it there so we can do a um, let me clear this down. we can do a git update index and we can say right let's add this let's add this to the index we can um, we need to specify the file permissions which we can just say like so and then I need to give it that hash again so I give it the hash and we can then say the file name uh, we'll call this one file.txt so this will actually add it into um, the the index in fact if I just nuke this for a minute quickly and we do a view of the index we can do git ls files and there's nothing in there at the moment that this this command shows us what is valid in our index um, so if I come back and do git update index add hash info so give it the um, the hash of our blob and say file one dot text again okay and now we do git ls files we can see that file is in there um, so for git add what are the steps that we've got so far we've 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 done a hash object on it to create a blob we've added it to the index um, we can we can see that um, low level in here as well if I go into dot git and um, and do a tree again here we can see we've actually got an extra file in here now because it's added it to the index so it created an index file and popped it in there that git ls file shows us the contents of that um, i can type it it's binary but you will see in here um, file one.txt is now being tracked it's within our index okay let's come back up and do a git status okay so because we did update index and it's in the index file, Git is now aware of it. You can see there's a new file, file1.txt. It's a little bit confused because in this folder there is no file1.txt. Um, so it's saying we've deleted it, uh, which is fair because we, you know, that's our fault. We've confused it a bit. We'll, we'll clean that up now. Um, so the next thing we would want to do is get a tree object. So remember, we've got, um, we've got a commit that points to a tree that points to a blob we've got the blob uh, we want the tree uh, we can literally go git right tree and that will create one for us it gives us the hash very conveniently there so i can copy that hash um, and we can go and look at this one again so we go into the git folder and we'll just do tree um, so under objects now there's our blob the file with um, hello in it uh, here's our tree now this tree as I said should point to the blob so we can we can look at that we can do git cat file in the same way as we did for the blob um, give it the hash and say a what type is it it's a tree um, yeah we can see it's a tree down here and if we print the contents of it you see on the minus let me just um 
I'll scroll it up so you can see in a sec here. So we just did minus P again. Um, so here is the contents of our tree and it just points to the blob file. It points to files. If there were more files in there, file2.txt, they would all be in this tree. And if we had a subfolder, we'd have another tree in there. So you can have pointers to trees and pointers to blobs from within your tree. And that allows you to have the whole um, folder structure of your entire repository. Um, all right, um, let's go back up again and do a git status. Uh, numbers has changed. We have got the tree there, um, but it still doesn't quite know what's going on. So if we actually do a commit now, that final object of the three types, the commit tree blob, um, that should clean this up a little bit. If I, if I look at git log, we haven't, well, A, we haven't even got a branch, but that's, that's something else we need to fix as well. We'll do that. Um, but let's do the commit now. So we can do a git commit tree, um, give it the uh, hash of the, the tree that we had, and give it a message as if you were doing a normal commit. We'll just say initial commit there. Um, and that gives us yet another object, yet another hash. This time it's the commit. Let's go into dot git. Have a look. Okay, three objects under the objects folder now. We've got the blob, we've got the tree, and we've also now got the commit, this one here. Let's look at the commit. Git cat file, that hash. I keep on, this keeps on appearing behind me, doesn't it? I'll just, um, I'll scroll it up again in a second. Git cat file, the hash, and the type. So that is a commit and print the contents of it. Scroll up so you can see. Um, so yeah, when we do the type, we know that this is a commit. When we print the contents, we can see that the commit has a reference to a tree. Um, it also says who performed the commit and it has the comment there. But you can see how that's lining up those three files, this, this tree, is pointing down to this, um, sorry, this commit, pointing down to this tree, which is pointing to the blob. And once you've got those three in place, uh, Git is gonna be a little bit more happy. There is one more thing that I need to do um, to get it looking cleaner here. I need to give it a branch. It says at the moment, we're on branch master, but I haven't really set that up. And the reason I couldn't set that up is because a branch is literally just a pointer to a commit. And we didn't have a commit till now, but I have got a commit now. Um, so if I go into the git folder now, and I go into refs, heads, and in here, I want a master file, because that'll just be the master branch. So I can put the hash of the commit into a file called master, and that will make Git a lot happier. So now we've got that in place. If I do Git status, you can see it's actually performed the commit. We've no longer got the green ready to be committed uh, for file on and text. It still thinks it's deleted because we have never actually physically created this file. It's not in our working directory. It's only in the staging directory and now the repository. Um, so, if I just do a git log as well, actually, you can see the log there is correct as well. But we can actually pull our file now out of the repository and get it into the working directory. Um, so I could do a git reset dash dash hard. Um, and I could just say to head, or I could put the commit, we'll say head. Okay, so head has moved. If I now do a dir, you'll see we've actually got our file coming back now. So file one was, was pulled out with that reset. Um, so that gives you a little idea of, of how those files are moving around as well. You know, When you pull, pull something out from the repository, it goes into your working directory, which is your folder there. And it literally creates the file in there for you. Um, okay, there you go. That's that process. Those are the objects that are getting created in there. You're creating 
um, commits, which point to trees, which point to blobs, and they move between the working directory, staging area, um, and the repository. Hope that was interesting. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, thumbs down if not. Thanks very much for watching, though. Catch you next time.